to get permission in many cases to go to school or work. Gays and lesbians are killed and Christians and Jews are persecuted. Give the money back. Why hasn't that been discussed that we're only 20 days out of the election and they take tens and tens of millions of dollars from countries that do that? Anyway, here with reaction on the phone, former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich is with us. Mr. Speaker, before I get to your general feelings, I want that moment to me was a huge moment in this debate like tonight. I thought it was one of the moments where he cut through all the baloney and got people to see how real uh, the Clinton phoniness is. And I think that's a big part of this. Um, you know, yeah. we, 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 Chris and I watched the debate with about 120 Orange County, California Republicans, and overwhelmingly they thought that Trump did better than they expected, uh, and they thought that Hillary did not do particularly well. And I think uh, from his standpoint, he's got a pretty good momentum coming out of this debate to go into the uh, last 20 days. You know, it's interesting. Frank Luntz had him losing the first debate, winning the last two, winning tonight, winning the second debate. Um, one thing that you've often said is that, you know what, he keeps growing. He's only been at this 18 months. And, and Rudy right. kind of was kidding about it tonight. And he goes, you know, if he had a fourth and fifth debate, he'd keep getting better every time. Do you agree with that? That's right. He, he, was, he was clearly better tonight than he was in the second debate. Clearly better in the second debate than the first. I thought tonight that overall he did a very, very good job. He was very controlled. Uh, Matt Towery, a pollster who's been around a long time, uh, just emailed me and said in the I-10 corridor uh, where he's doing some work tonight, uh, it's 55-35 that uh, Trump beat Hillary. Uh, and that's a, that, that is the swing section of Florida. So that's very good news for Trump. Um, you know, I, I just think there's a general sense that uh, on the big points that are going to matter, uh, he kept scoring and she kept failing. And in a number of places, and i got to go back and do my homework on this, but, for example, on the, uh, the missing $6 billion in the State Department, I think she just plain lied. Oh, she did like lie. Her, her that story is that yeah. story was reported in uh, in 2014. I had read it many, many times. She said it was debunked. That's not true. They have no idea where that money went. He was 100 percent correct. Think, you know, I, she's talking. I, I that's 100 percent. I think it was an inspector general. I think it was a government inspector general who found the six that's billion correct. dollars. Yeah. And they, and they said, what, what is going on here? And nobody ever gave an answer on it. And she said, oh, that's been debunked. No, that wasn't debunked. Um, so that's a good point. You know, we've got a lot of other balls in the air here, Mr. Speaker, and, uh, you know, I know the, everyone's going to spin out of this debate, but the bottom line is Donald Trump stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with a political machine, a robot that memorized her lines and came out. I, I look at Lunds' focus groups are pretty tough because they're all independent voters, all undecided. And he won two of those three debates, and now you've got the Veritas ball in, in play, the Project Veritas. Then you got... You know, the whole WikiLeaks that keep coming out, and you and I have been discussing at length now, and I just don't know if the public has yet to absorb the magnitude of all that's out there yet and when we're going to get accurate poll numbers. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I, I talked to 1,200 people at the Reagan Library last night and 950 people at the Nixon Library today, and the general feeling was enthusiasm and commitment. But in addition, you know, I, I raised the question, of where's the Federal Bureau of Investigation? How can we have the things you have been outlining in which people were planning to commit violence? We now have evidence from the Federal Election Commission reports that the, camp, the Clinton campaign was paying some of the people who were planning the violence. And we had a report today that the guy who was the key organizer of this was in the White House over 300 times. Now, how can all this be going on and the FBI doesn't exist? I mean, what, what has happened to America when you can have this kind of clear visible signs of an effort to uh, undermine democracy and use violence, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation hey, is, is, is missing. Mr. Speaker, we had him on tape saying that Hillary has knowledge of the fomenting the violence, knowledge of their voter fraud scheme. We have the FBI, a quid pro quo that is offered to the FBI. If I, oh, we'll give you what you want. If you just let Sean Hannity and Laura Ingram and New Kingridge off, good luck to the rest of the world. And then on top of that, we discovered collusion with the State Department tipping Hillary and her campaign off and the Justice Department tipping them off, and the Obama White House, Obama himself, lying about not knowing about the email server because he was emailing her on that server. Uh, by the way, I, I thought it was very telling uh, when Trump did a very good job 
of bringing in General Cartwright's dilemma, where for one yeah. violation he's threatened with jail, and for thirty-three thousand missing um, emails plus destroying various, you know, government uh, servers, etc. I mean, the degree to which we are seeing corruption in action is just beyond anything I'd ever imagined could happen in the United States. All right, Mr. Speaker, thanks so much for being with us. I know you're going to be at, Great what, the it. Nixon Library tomorrow night, or when are you going to be at the oh, Nixon no, Library? We're just there today. No, we're there today. Oh, good. Great time.